Hello everybody. Um, this is, I, I want to start by first confessing that this is probably the most difficult um, speech or talk that I will ever do in the longest time. Um, we, are, we are here celebrating a friend, um, a brother, a mentor, a father, an uncle, um, his Ubon King is, is many things to many people. I got a call from Canada yesterday. A young man called me and, um, and he said, Ubon King always, always talked about you. He talked about values that you deposited in him. And it used to make me wonder why a man like that that I that I that I liked so much and that was a mentor to me would also say that somebody else um, he got stuff from somebody else um, that touched me. He said Ubong had called him and his family and uh, for some reason, like two weeks before he passed, um, and he talked about me a lot as if he was trying to hand the young man over to me. And so that was the conversation I had yesterday. Um, I'm trying to background some of the things I'm going to talk about today. I, I'm, I'm not... The topic is supposed to be dead to fly or something like that. Um, but for me, it's not just dead to fly. It's life like a movie. Especially in today's world where we're all consumed by social media and everything is recorded, everything is televised. And so it's more like life, life like a movie because our reality today is reality that is being televised, is reality that is, is, that, that is online, where digital imprints are the most important things. History, as history is unfolding today, it's being recorded, it's being snapped, it's on Snapchat, it's on TikTok. It's on Instagram, it's on Facebook, it's everywhere. And so in a world that is like that, how do you live your life? How do you now live your reality? It's like we all are in some kind of cage, some kind of pressure port, and, and everybody is struggling to be seen. In a country of 100 million people or 200 million people or 10 million people, everybody wants to be the one that is being talked about or that is being seen. Life like a movie, dare to fly. Um, Ubon King, I, I choose to talk about him. Uh, I was saying to the young man who we was speaking yesterday that, funny enough, this might be difficult for, for his family and all of that, but funny enough, when I remember Ubon, when I think about him, I have no regrets. I don't, I don't have any regrets. I, 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 I tend to smile now because his, his, his presence, I'm having good spirit, suffuses me with so much joy. Um, he didn't live long enough. Naturally, his parents, his family, we are, his friends want to see him live for, for as long as possible, even to his hundreds. But he didn't. But what did he do when he lived? What, what was he like when he lived? He touched everybody, young, old, you know, average, he touched everybody. Ubon was just special. Um, let me just try and keep recalling incidents um, of, of, our, of our chats or of our encounters. Shortly before he passed, we were scheduled to go to Uyo to speak. Um, he wanted me to speak to the students in Uyo uh, because according to him, our journey, my journey and his journey started from Uyo. I had been invited by uh, a friend of mine uh, from Household of God at the time uh, yeah, to, to come to you to speak in a church and I didn't know who I touched that day but incidentally um, whatever I said that day was, was, was one of the strong things, impressions that um, Ubon King carried with him and he said to me that he was in that hall that day and he was listening to me as a young boy and he said to himself, man, I just want to be like this man, you know. And of course, faith and, and God and nature will conspire to bring us, you know, even closer. I remember again, 
um, one time. Okay, let, let me let me not let me not go there yet. Let me just finish talking about you. So he said to me, I need you to come back to you to speak to these kids, you know, to, 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 to young people, to students. Because if I, I believe that if many, many years ago you were able to touch my life and look at what has has happened to me or look at what I have become, I believe that if you come to you, even if it's just one person that you touch today, or you will touch when you speak to you. That person might be even bigger than me and he will affect a generation. And it is true. Um, I don't know how many people I touched that day, but I can at least say that I touched one thing that day. And look at how he has turned around to touch many lives, inspire an entire generation and even people older than him. And even me, who is supposed to be one of his mentors, turn around, become one of his own mentees, and he will drag me to everywhere that he thought people needed to hear whatever it is that I had to say that changed his life. And hopefully, I will say to those people and it will change their lives. Ubon King took me to Umwahe. And it was one of our, one of our best out, one of my best outings as, as a speaker. We went to a church that has been pastored by a young dynamic pastor, Jerry. And I hadn't seen a concentration of young people gathered in one place. You know how you stay in Lagos and you think life starts and ends in Lagos? Oh my goodness. I saw so many young people in Wire that day that, I, you know, I had a chill. And I had one of the most amazing times because I shared the stage with, with other young dynamic speakers, Jimmy Tewe, of course, Umbon was there, shook the whole place, shook tables as he usually would do, and all of that. So back to you, we had boarded. We, we, we checked in for the flight and we are, we are at the lounge waiting to be called for the flight when his phone rang and he looked at it and he said, oh, uh, boss, I'm sorry, he called me boss, I'm sorry, man, we can't go to you again, the governor has canceled the function. I said, okay, let's go, let's go back. So we deboarded. He called his driver who had dropped us at the airport and he said the driver said he was already past through Larry. And he said, Okay, you know what? Go to Irem's house and wait for us there. We'll just take an Uber and come meet you. So we took an Uber, came to my house. And that day, this is like two weeks before he passed. We sat down, we ate, we drank, he teased my wife, gave my wife presents, you know. Ubon, Ubon has that, that effect. He, he gets into a family, he befriends everybody in the family, and he deals with everybody individually. In fact, that day, uh, jokingly, my wife had said, oh, look, um, I, I, we're going to Dubai for Christmas and New Year. Well, it, it would be a bad place to stay forever, you know? And immediately he got on his phone and he started calling somebody in Dubai, started calling somebody in America, people that he had helped, the young man who he had helped, uh, is now working in Dubai as as as, uh, as a veterinary doctor. Was calling to see if my wife is serious. Oh, he can make this call. He can make that call. He was already making the calls. That was how he was. And when the news came, when in Dubai, when the news came that he had passed, my wife wailed and cried and cried. And later on that day, it hit me that every breath that we have left in this world we must spend it making sure that we leave it like it's the last we must spend it making sure that we affect people's lives so much so that at every point in time anybody we encounter we are able to lift the person as we are lifting ourselves we must of necessity be able to lift other people along with us. Um, what's the point of a motivational speaker if he just speaks and nothing happens? What is the point of a speaker who tries to inspire people and you just talk with high highfalutin words and nobody gets inspired? He had an exceptional gift. He, 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 he dared to dream. 
he he was a man who will say to you who, 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 who says to you look you can do a b c d to get to e all right and he will put you through the process he will tell he will tell you how he started from a got to b got to c got to d and now he's he's on e my my the summary of everything that i have to say today is is going to be put in a few key sentences which is like courage the courage to live the life that you dream about is not something that is in your just your genetics no it's a choice you know people use words like intentional and all that it is a choice that you must make and say i dream of being a superstar musician i begin to put in the work i choose to wake up every morning and maybe if i want to be to do play the, the saxophone i put in x number of hours in trying to play the saxophone i put in x number of hours in trying to play my flute or the piano and all of that i was i was listening or reading something that pastor samadhi i mean my pastor said yesterday and he said there was a guy no i think it was, i was reading i was reading what he posted and he was talking about a guy called Shole or so who uh, when they were doing inter-hospital, before they are inter-hospital, that he found that like two months or so before the inter-hospital, the guy will wake up, put on his tracksuit, and he will run, he will do all kinds of things. And he says he used to say to himself, then, well, man, what's this guy doing? The inter-hospital is like two, three months away. Why is he running every morning? When the inter-hospital finally came, that guy, Shole, he won the 100 meters, he won the 200 meters, and he, and he, he anchored of, and won the 4 by 100 meters relay. Now what is this talking about? It is talking about having made a choice to be the best sportsman in that school or be the best sprinter in that school. Shole, using Pastor Sam and um, uh, um, story, Shole decided to start the process of becoming that person. And so he woke up every morning and did what he had to do. Same thing. I came to Lagos very, very decided that I want to teach or I want to do a job that will make me close at 2 p.m. or 3 p.m. And after that, I want to hustle as an actor because I want to see myself on television. I want to be famous. I want to, I want to be uh, uh, an actor of note. I want to be on stage. I want to have time to do the things that I have always wanted to do, which is to be on television or to be on stage. And that was exactly what I started doing. I, I, I found a teaching job, but it was a non-paying job. I was teaching at King's College, dance and movement. And they wouldn't retain me, they wouldn't pay me. Um, I got other gigs on the side, you know. But the point was, I, was, I never lost track. Whatever thing I did, I tried to be a journalist. I try to be a mass communicator. Whatever I did, I always gravitated back to the theater in the evening or at 4 p.m. or at 2 p.m. I always came back to NTA, the places where I wanted to ply my trade. And every day, rain or shine, whether there was money or not, you wake up, you buy a while going in the morning, you buy the one you will eat in the evening and keep. You soak your gari or you eat your, your, your bread or you eat your yam with it and you keep some of the fruit and you go. You come back, you start from where you stop. Look, make the choice today. It's okay to dream. They will tell, people will tell you, dream big, let the dream scare you. Yes, when you have dreamt, you have to begin the process of trying to actualize your dream. And it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how the circumstances are. Boko Haram, uh, headsman, whatever it is that is selling you, uh, coffee, COVID. There are always going to be restrictions. When I came out of university in 1983, after youth service in 1984, there was an embargo on employment by the federal government. Incidentally, it was still Buhari at the time. So there I was, I had a 2-1 certificate in my hand, and there was no job for me. It was tough. The, the, the economy was, there was, was undergoing all kinds of things. It was, there was a, a regime change, and, and the country was on, on a slow grind. There will always be restrictions. Always, always, always. There will be no jobs. There will be nothing. Today, we have circumstances that, we have things that can break 
some of these restrictions or some of the bars or some of the uh, uh, hurdles that we have to scale through. One of which is this same social media that we are talking with. As I'm talking to you now, I am on a, on a movie set. But this is important to me, so I have had to make time to come here, do quickly 15, 10 minutes or 20 minutes, talk after you said this in 1984, there was an embargo on employment by the federal government. Incidentally, it was still Buhari at the time. So there I was, I had a 201 certificate in my hand, and there was no job for me. It was tough. The, the, the economy was, there was, was undergoing all kinds of things. It was, there was a, a regime change and, and the country was on, on a slow grind. There will always be restrictions. Always, always, always. There will be no jobs. There will be nothing. Today, we have circumstances that, we have things that can break some of these restrictions or some of the bars or some of the uh, uh, hurdles that we have to scale through. One of which is this same social media that we are talking with. As I'm talking to you now, I am on a, on a movie set. But this is important to me, so I have had to make time to come here, do quickly 15, 10 minutes or 20 minutes, talk to you guys, honor my friend Obon King and her dash back. Because from time, when I became old enough to, to decide or to perceive what I wanted to do, all I said to myself was, I want to be on television. I told my mom when I was going to study theater that I just want to be on television. You will see me on television. And for some reason, that always comes back. This part, look, television today has been redefined to be where you can see somebody on screen. So television is actually your phone these days. Television has left the screen, the wall. Television these days is not about that, that box that is in your, your living room, okay? It's not just about that box anymore. Your television now is your phone, is the screen of your phone. And so if you see me there now, or you see me on your iPad or on your computer, that was where I always wanted to be. And what have I done? Or what did I do about it? I was dedicated. I would go through every, every restriction. I would fly a bus. I will run. I will walk. I will go to auditions from morning till night. I didn't care what it was. I will walk to auditions where there are over a, 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 a hundred, two hundred, three hundred 200, 300 people. And you will put, you put in your stake. You will speak your truth, you will do your act, and, and if you get it, fine, if you don't get it, you move on to the next. I see people say to me, they call me and say, oh, um, Uncle Rachel, I've, I've been, please help me, I've been to auditions, like 20 auditions, and I haven't got anything. If you don't know somebody, you can't know. You are building more restrictions on your life. Your belief has to be bigger than your own belief. You have to, you have to have that self-belief, that, that intentional, choice that you have made to become what it is that you want to be you have to keep working it every day i mean i give you some examples i see i see people like don jazzy on social media i see a switch as, as social media evolves you see people like him they this is the same don jazzy calm cool collected guy behind the barge in those days he comes he's the boss he doesn't say a lot but today he wears was that thing that women wear in their head and he's on the streets, he's doing all kinds of funny things. His his followership, which is as an influencer on social media, is going through the roof. There are all kinds of people who are doing stuff. TikTok. Jesse the ruler during the lockdown became a TikTok giant. There are all kinds you must be able to look at all the limitations that you have in your life and begin to find the avenues that you can use to beat those limitations and begin to ride those limitations. Anything I want to do these days, I always say there is always fear. As an actor, there's something that I, I, I teach. I teach younger actors. There's always a, a there's always going to be stage fright. Stage fright is the same thing that happens to you when you are going to go into a big business, when you are going to go into a new area of life, and you are not too sure. You are starting a new job in the bank. You are not too sure. You are starting a new insurance company job, or you are you are in a fintech, or you are in a small startup. You must have that little fright. What you do, 
And what I do as an actor is you ride the flight, the, the fright. You, you mount it. It's like giving you wings. And after a while, you will master your fear or your fright. And when you master it, you can then begin to ride it confidently. That is when things will begin to fall together. I can give you the example of a young girl that I have adopted, uh, that, that Ubon King also uh, reached out to uh, because of you know how I used to use her as a teaching point. Real worry picking. I will always say that, look, this girl, I saw her on Instagram. I saw her grow from 1,000, 2,000, and today, boom, people call me and say to me, oh, RMD, please, 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 talk to your daughter, real worry picking. I want her to do something for me. I want her to influence on the product for me. I want her to influence on the product for me. Look, there are no limitations that you cannot overcome. It is a question of how you can strategize, how you can look at your environment. Every time the problems become, they look insurmountable, that is where the opportunities also lie. You know, people will tell you, business people will tell you that. Uh, I was watching Maduka, the, uh, uh, the, the, the owner of uh, 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 Coast Charis. I, I, I saw a tape of him speaking yesterday and it, it inspired me so much. You know, he was talking about how, you know, um, uh, he, be, he, he believing in, in, in your own ability can, can help you surmount whatever problems you, you, you have. He was talking about how he found himself in a board in spite of his limited education where there are other people, other people there uh, that had degrees from Harvard and Co. But he said he carried something into that board. The thing that he carried into that board was what they don't teach them in Harvard, which is street smart. All of us, all of us today, we are all in the streets. Yes, I repeat it, all of us today, we are all in the streets. The streets, the host, the streets of hustle, the hustling streets, where you will be, if you are not knocked down by an Okada, you'll be knocked down by a boss, or you can be knocked down by an arm robber, or you can be attacked by SARS, or you can be attacked by police or army or anything. I'm just saying that the odds are stacked against all of us. Yes, no more big man, nothing. Whether you have Mopo that they are carrying guns and all that, that is in itself presents its own trouble. So we all are in the streets hustling. So the, the difference, what separates us from those who make it, what separates the people who make it and those who don't make it, is how well you can master your environment, that street that we all are hustling. How do you master it? What are the tools that present themselves in spite of the myriad of problems? What are the tools that present themselves for you to be able to overcome or ride the ugly monster and conquer it? Become as successful as Koscharis or even more successful as Kos, uh, than Kos, uh, Koscharis and all the people who are in the streets hustling and succeeding. Look, Ubon King, our friend, our brother, our mentor, our mentee, our father, our uncle. He found it. He 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 taught himself self improvement. He made sure every day of his life he was able to add something of value into his life. So every time he encountered people, he could when people are bringing stuff to the table, he brought his own value. So over time, because of what he was doing, every day he was adding value to himself. He became a storehouse of value. So when you mention the name Ubon King, you are you are looking at brand Ubon King. When you say Ubon King, what happens is that you are calling a man that is a storehouse of values and, and or a brand that is a storehouse of value. So when you open it, you will find a dedicated man. When you open it, you will find a father who is also dedicated to his family. When you open it, you will find a, a motivational speaker who goes beyond motivation and actually teaches you how the A, B, C, D of success, of, of self-improvement. When you open when you open that brand, that brand, brand of Bon King, you will find so much value. And that is why, in spite of the little years that he lived here on earth, he's not here today. Tinkation and many more things that he did 
we are here today celebrating him using him as a contact point to people who might not have the opportunities uh, uh, to, 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 to go on YouTube or to hear other people that can motivate them to better to success. One of the temptations I attended, I think the last but one one uh, that I attended, we talked about people who came, who drove all the way from Benway State or something like that. They drove overnight and came to the venue before everybody. I think one of them won uh, a phone that day or so. It's that kind of dedication where they are not sharing money. They are not sharing food. They are just going to, people are just going to gather together and share thoughts, ideas. And you will, you will hear about that kind of thing. And you will leave where you are. Benway State with little or nothing in your pocket, with no money for accommodation, and then you will say, I will drive overnight and I will sleep at the venue, and when people call me, they will meet me there. That is the kind of dedication. That is the kind of choice that you make to better your life. I hope that somebody will look at the life history of Ubon King, how he rose from nothing, from absolutely nothing, he didn't make a first class, he didn't make a second class up, and he didn't make even a second class. But today, he has touched and raised people that are all over the world celebrating him and, and, and saying the kind of person that he is. I hope that if you are listening, you will look at his life, take all the things that, the positive things that he has taught all of us, young and old, and better your life. And, and make that choice to better your life today. Um, like I said, this has been one of the most difficult uh, speeches that I've had to make, but um, I just had to do this to honor my friend, my brother, my mentee, who became my mentor as well. Uh, God bless you.